So uh, I said this like six months ago, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. I said if they going, if Biden's gonna give in and uh, and get rid of Title Forty Two, it's gonna end up being used as a political issue for the Republicans. I said <clears throat> I said six months ago it's gonna be the thing that gets the Democrats kicked out of Congress. Right. And here we are heading into the summer. The midterm elections are coming up in November. Elections are less than six months away. Biden's getting rid of Title 42. From, from a policy standpoint, he's right to do it. Right. From a policy standpoint, he's right to do it. In the sense that, um, you know, immigrants are not, are not bringing in COVID. People applying for asylum across the border are not bringing COVID because they are ap applying for asylum. They're getting a credible fear interview. They are, uh, they can be vaccinated. They can be tested. Right. Um, and quite frankly, people are coming in from all over the world. So from a public health standpoint, I don't think it really bears a big deal. From a political standpoint, because these people are not white people trying to cross the border. They right. are mostly darker skinned or, uh, or black or Hispanic, Latin American crossing the border. And now the Republicans are making it into a wedge issue. We talked about it yesterday. Immigration from a policy standpoint is what should be the economic can what immigrants should be allowed in to give the United States the best economic impact. And we as a country and a history of, of helping people, who do we want to let in on a humanitarian basis? That's what immigration is. It should be just a policy decision. Instead, it's become a wedge cultural issue. And now that Biden is uh, cutting back or, or taking back Title 42, um, there's a lot, a lot of flack from both <clears> sides. <throat> Uh, when asked by uh, CNN, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, Alexander Mayorkas said, I say, number one, that we have plans. We have to be very mindful of the fact that we are addressing enemies, and those enemies are the cartels and the smugglers, and I will not provide our plans to them. We are going to proceed with our execution carefully, methodically, in anticipating different scenarios. Now, CBP has already apprehended more than one million people this year trying to run across the border. And that began in October. So in six months, over 1 million apprehensions of people trying to cross the border. What Title 42 does is allows people to go to the border crossing and say, hi, I don't want to run across the border. Mm -hmm. I would like to apply for asylum. And then they get a credible fear interview and then it's determined whether or not to let them in for their asylum interview. Now, even Democrats don't want Title 42. Democrats who are up for election, they don't want Title 42 to be, um, to be uh, overturned by Biden. Uh, two border state Democratic senators, Arizona Senators Kristen Sinema and Mark Kelly, they sent a letter to the president last month arguing that Title 42 needed to be, remain in place. They're both in competitive races. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnick, he was the former pastor of Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, Ebenezer Church. He's now a senator in Georgia. And he is in a competitive race in Georgia. So he, he's reading the tea leaves. He says, it's the wrong time. Mm. Don't do it. Do you agree? From a, from a, from a, from a policy standpoint, it should be done. It's the right thing to do. It's the humanitarian thing to do. Um, there's no reason to have people live in Tent City. From a political standpoint, uh, the Republicans are going to twist it. They're going to make immigration a wedge issue. They make it now cultural. Immigration is a cultural issue. It's their number one political issue that they can rely on. When the governor of Texas is running on immigration and governors have nothing to do with immigration, mm -hmm. That's how volatile a wedge issue it has become for Republicans and independents.
That says it all. Mm. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.